Praise the Lord. It's going to see us again. I'm still wearing the same clothes, still sitting in the exact same spot as the last one because I don't want to make this very long. So this is part two of when you see these things in your dreams, my sister who's still single, my brother who's still si single looking for a wife, eh, get on your knees and pray. Don't rush into a relationship. If you're into one, pray even harder. Double up on the prayer and the fasting. Um, me, every time God was warning me, I saw these things for a very long time, but I, I was lazy. I, I'm not going to say that I was lazy because one of the other things that I, I noticed that the enemy does, he will cast on you the spirit of, uh, I don't know what it's called. You know, that spirit that overwhelms you, you know what you're supposed to do, but you're not able. It's like your hands are tied. You know, I should be fasting. But you, the desire is there, but there's that weakness that you're just not able to break out and do the right thing, right? You're just not able. I'll see dreams. I'll come, you know, into actual contact with things that I'm supposed to destroy for my breakthrough. I'll be holding a gun, pointing at, at you know, gun point like that. But within me, I'll be unable to shoot. I'll be unable to shoot. I was on that battle for years. Knowing exactly what was binding me, but unable to, you know, summer, how fast a day here or two, I had no consistency until I started crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, let me, let me just ask you something. You yourself divinely intervene, divinely intervene, because if you never intervene and the state is just dependent on me, I'm never going to make it. I've tried everything that I know how to try, but it's still not happening. I cried out to the Lord. I said, look. Because sometimes God will not send nobody, will not send anybody. He himself will come. And I've seen him come. I was telling a friend of mine that there's a time we were praying. I was in a prayer meeting. And I had a vision. This vision was so clear. Uh, this uh, uh, apostle Joshua, is this Solomon or something like that? I don't know his, his other name. But he was leading a prayer meeting. And I was in that prayer meeting praying. And I had the vision. That man of God came and put his hand on my forehead. He was anointing me with oil on my forehead, on my cheeks for laughter and on my, in my palms. And after he did that, I saw another vision of me appearing in front of me that the upper part of my body, no, the, the, the bottom part of my body was free, right? But from the waist upwards, I was still wrapped up in bandage, you know those those wraps that they, the white wrap that they wrap around dead people, something that is being married. For the Lord to show me that look, your deliverance, in, in as much as you look like you've had so many breakthroughs upon breakthroughs from the Lord, your deliverance is still not complete. So there was a part of me that was not delivered yet, that I hadn't I hadn't seen anything yet, and I saw this man that jumped up from somewhere, and he fell on me like he, he jumped on me like his feet landed round about my waist. And these hands were round about in my neck. And as I looked closer in the vision, I could see that this is the Lord Jesus Christ. My, my spirit could recognize him. And, but he jumped on me so forcefully. I was like, is he going to throw me down? Or like, what is this person doing? So forcefully. And he started to, descend, like, to, to, to unwrap this wrapping that was around, you know, the upper part of my body from the head. All the way. But he was doing it with a lot of strength. In other words, that this time I have come. I have come myself so you can see me. I've come to do it. I didn't even want to send. I didn't want to show you a vision where it's your pastor that is doing it. No, me, myself, I'm showing you that I'm here with my own hands to deliver you from whatever was left. And I was able to take the bandit off. And from that time, I started to see a new direction, a new direction that my life was taking. My old pastor used to tell me one thing. She said that, Godly, you see, there were bad things happen in your life. That you're going from, from one shitty to another shitty. Sorry for me to use those kind of words. I don't know. Like one bad situation to another bad situation to another bad situation. The day God will start to do good things in your life, the same way that these bad things look like a... A, 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 a tape recorder on repeat of bad things. You're just going from one bad relationship to the next bad relationship, from one bad encounter to the next. The same way it will be on repeat 
from one go one place of goodness to the next goodness to the next goodness, it will be, there will be no turning back. It will be from that point on, upwards and forwards only. So, the very first thing that I want to mention that was very problematic for myself was something that we all know about. I think I'll start with the dogs. I was going to start with the spiritual husbands, but that's for another one. Dogs. The thing, the creature called the dog. I was seeing dogs for many years. I think from my teenage years, I started having a lot of dreams around dogs. I'll be around them. There's a time I used to see my mother's house where I grew up, that I was walking around the house. And all of a sudden, a drop of water dropped on the floor or on the table. And I went to look to see where the water was coming from. And all of a sudden, within the water, I saw that there was a, a camera. Like a, 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 a camera, like, uh, what's it? Um, home CCTV. That I was being monitored. I said, ah! So this, this entire time, there's a, 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 a monitor in the entire house monitoring me. And when I looked on who, clearly who is looking, who is monitoring me, on the other side, I saw a huge bulldog, black, huge like this, like in the form of a, a German shepherd. As I said, whoa. So there's a dog watching me in this house on CCTV. I said, mm. So then I, I was like, ah, let me get out of this house. And as I got out, the, 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 my, 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 I got out of the house looking at myself that I, I was dressed, I had a dress on. By the time I reached outside, I have no clothes on. You see, those type of dogs, those type of spirit walk with the spirit of shame, right? Spiritual nakedness that you, in your mind, your clothes or whatever, but they want to bring all kinds of shame, all kinds of embarrassment upon your life, right? As we all know, dogs are strong representatives of the spirit of uh, uh, ancestral spirits, like uh, uh, familiar spirits that run in families, monitoring spirits, monitoring demons especially around the spirit of uh, uh, sexual immorality, around the, 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 uh, the um, area of uh, just a monitoring demon, the one that they put as a guard that you should never, ever reach certain levels. It's there to guard, like, where are you going? You know, like a guardian. Mine was so bad. I saw dogs, like, for so many years. Sometimes I'll have dreams. I'll be going somewhere. I will see a herd of dogs. But this time there's the, there was always a man behind these dogs. Like kind of, kind of, you know, behind them, uh, telling them to run faster, run chest after me. I will run and I'll enter a building. I'll try to cross, to, to close the door. I can't come out and confront them. I can't fight because there were so many. I hide myself. And when I, when I hide myself, again, this is another sign of spiritual weakness. Because if you're strong spiritually, Nothing should be coming after you in the dream. I don't care how many dogs. Somehow a machete will fall into your hands from somewhere and you have to scatter them one by one. You see yourself killing them all. When you're spiritually strong, you're unstoppable. But when you see yourself, you see something chasing you, you're hiding, you can't confront it. Ah, uh, my friend, more prayers, more fasting. That means there's still a lot of weakness that you, you instead of standing and fighting, you're, you're running into hiding. And those things are still coming. You know, for, for, for years because you don't have the strength to, you know, face them off and deal with them. So I'll run to this building. I'll, I'll lock myself in. And when I get in there, there's a man already waiting in. So the, it's like those spiritual, um, that connection was there linked to a spiritual husband to this uh, dog kind of situation. There was no way I was running from it. And then sometimes I'll see myself walking and there's a dog always behind me, following me, sniffing me. Uh, it will be sniffing me. So most of the time, the ones that will just sniff you, that will just be around you, they're not biting you or whatever. Those are things, yeah, ancestral spirits or demonic forces that run within our families. The one that will come and attack you and bite you, sometimes those that is linked to witchcraft. Someone has done something. I've had encounters of, you know, being bitten by a dog in the dream. Uh, again, that particular encounter, that was one. In the dream, I saw that one of my brothers that was messing around at a time, going with different women, right, left, and center. And again, I could see why there were so many links to dogs because the family that I come from, 
there's a lot of you know all sorts of things around that area like sleeping around uh, uh, my father had so many different women uh, so many different children by different women a lot of you know our family members were going down in that you know that direction there's no marriage no ma nobody officially gets married just have cohabit and have children that's how it works so um in that particular uh dream i was trying to tell my brother off like why are you always sleeping around and this dog this my brother turned into a dog beat me on the hand but there was a man sitting right next to us and he said to me say godly you handle that very wrongly you don't deal with such with a dog like that i, I feel like this was the spirit of the lord speaking to me you deal with this with prayer you don't confront such a spirit because you're constantly on and on and on on your brother. Meanwhile, the same spirit that was running in him was also running in me. So that particular bite that I had in the dream, I had to fight so much to get delivered from that because I went into the same things that I was criticizing him for doing. I went and started doing them myself without actually realizing. So the attack was just on the repeat. And then I had a, this a lot. I don't even know what to tell you and what to cut out. But it was a lot of dog-related dreams. Um, one particular one. It will go from phases to phases. Uh, sometimes I'll see myself in the dream. I'm walking around. There are two dogs following me. And when I get to a certain junction, they will separate. One will catch, will take the left. The other one will, will, will take the right. And they'll both turn into men. And those men will disappear. I didn't see their faces. Ah, that time I was so disturbed. I got down on my knees. I was like, Lord, I'm sick and tired of seeing dogs. What do those dogs mean? Like, who are these two dogs that I see? And I remember the Holy Spirit telling me clearly, say, look, Godly, the reason you're seeing two dogs, one of them is representing the, the bondage and the monitoring demons on your mother's side. The other one is... The demon, the, the mental demons on your father's side, the spirit, the uh, sexual immorality on both sides, the bondage with the, the spirit that walks, that manifests through dogs on both sides of the family. So that's why it was just a lot. So I went into uh, a deep uh, repentance, and I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. I remember that time uh, at the end of the prayer and fasting, I had another dream. That I was walking around and I saw a house that had a very small door with a little opening at the bottom. Like, you know, those, uh, what do they call it? The cart uh, 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 outlet, like where the, the, the little cart can come in and out of the door by itself if the owners are not home. And I saw, I was standing somewhere and I saw this massive bulldog, like the, the one I usually, one of the ones I usually see uh, uh, chasing me or walking by me in the dream. It came. I could see that this house is my father's house. It was trying to get in. This time, the, the, the box had become narrow. It was no longer fit for its head because of all the prayers I was fi uh, firing. It kept trying, it kept trying. It was not getting through. Ah, it got tired, and then it went to run off. So when it ran off, I didn't see where it went. But as I walked around the village, someone came and said, Oh, have you seen what has happened? I was like, No. Look, they were, they were pointing in the road. They said, look, see what, what happened there. The dog that has been frequently going through that, that house, in and out as it pleases, it just got badly knocked down by a speeding car. So when it failed to enter, to access my father's house, the way it's been going, it went into the road and a, a speeding car came from somewhere and crushed it to pieces. Again, that was a massive victory. One of the ways that I overcame the one that ran in my father's family. Now, the one of my mother's family, I didn't even know that was the most notorious one. You see, it was, it took years fighting this particular one. It was the last one for me to actually deal with and finally scatter for good. That one took, like, I kept thinking, like, what? I keep seeing this dog, like, what is going on? What is going on? Like, what's happening? Until the Lord started really, uh, uh, revealing the different layers of what was linked to that dog. It was linked to the bondages and the issues that I was suffering in the, in the area of marriage. You see, because there was uh, a lot of covenants that were made relating to this dog, attached to this dog. That everyone in my family would just sleep around like the way the dog sleeps around. But they will never be married 
officially. They will just leave around, sleep around. Men can have children with you. That's not a problem. Sleep around. But when it comes to marriage, no. Because we're already all married off to a demonic God. And I think part of it was represented by a, 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 a dog. We're all married off uh, to this particular spirit that my, my parents had made a covenant with. And my dad told me this uh, face to face, not face to face, but he told me it myself when I first, you know, met my partner, a, a, a man, met a man and I went to my dad as I looked at I want to get married. I've never seen, I've never been around to witness a, a, a marriage in this family. I don't know any of my sisters that have ever married. I don't even know any of my aunties that have ever been married. There's absolutely no wedding, no marriage that I've seen with all the, the, the females in my family. At that time, I only knew one wedding and that was my, my younger brother's. Um, and he was a Christian at the time that when he had that wedding and stuff. So what ended up happening? My dad said to me, oh, my dad got so worried and said, no, you can't get married. If you get married, you will die. You will surely die. I was like, dad, what do you mean? He said, look, there's a covenant in this, in this family. Anybody, any child of mine that will attempt to get married, if they don't die, I will die. And he tried to tell me what had happened and what they got themselves into. I was like, okay, fair enough. I didn't bother him no more. I just went, let me take my matters to God and let me, you know, see what God can do for me. But anyway, the one on my mother's side, uh, I'm just talking about the experience of dogs if I come to what that has they got to really do with marriage. So again, that one, I fought for a very, very long time. Very, very, very long time until the Lord started, you know, revealing to me uh, why was I seeing it in my mother's house? Because at some point when my mother was alive, they had gone to the point of burying a dog in our dining area. They, 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 they you know, dug the, the, what's it, the ground out and buried a dog. I don't know if they buried it alive, if they cut its throat and, you know, buried it and put the flooring back, back there. We were in boarding school, so I didn't witness it myself. But the story started manifesting later on. The time I heard about it, I was already an adult. And it was during, it came in handy because it was during the time that I was going through deliverance. I'd prayed, I'd done everything that I knew how to do. I ran away to Uganda, to the prayer mountain. And that's where the Lord started revealing what was really, really going on. He used the pastor that didn't even know my story. To point at me and said, you, I'll tell you the, the, the spirit that is behind that dog that you see. He mentioned it. Um, it, it has a name in my language. But... I don't know what the name is in English. It's one of the most notorious maritime spirits. Uh, so when he mentioned that, I asked the Lord, how do I deal with this? He said, Lord, take a pasta, take anointing oil, go back and find the house where you grew up. It was already sold, but luckily I knew I was still attached to the person that who we sold the house to. We went there with my pastor friend. We prayed over the entire house. Prayed over the entire building, anointed it, anointed it. There was nobody living in it because they were renting it at the time. And a few days after, we did what the Lord asked me to do. I had a dream that I was walking around in the same house this time with my hands raised up, praising the Lord and singing that song that says, I am your own, I am your own, till the day you return, Jesus, I am your own. And that was my deliverance. That was my victory over that particular dog. But the things that I went through, mm -mm. It, there's a lot of stories that I can tell you about the dogs that I saw. But there's another type of dog that unfortunately I can't tell you all about my encounter with that particular one because it's attached to another really, really horrible story. Really deep story that I'm still believing God for the grace and the permission to be able to share that testimony because there's a lot of other people that are involved. Uh, and it's a part of a, a story of my life that a lot of people do not know about, apart from those that are very close to me that know what really happened and we you know what went on in that particular situation. But one day I am going to tell that story because today, even after today, when I think about it, it's one of the things that reminds me of, about the goodness, the greatness of God. Because in that particular situation, in that particular season, when I encountered that particular type of dogs and uh, dogs and the way they were camouflaging themselves, 
This one sometimes will come in form of a dog in the dreams and sometimes stand with the face of a lion. And they were also driven by a man. There was always a man, a shadow of a man from a distance watching them. But every time I turn to look at his face, he would turn into a shadow and disappear. And those ones I fought over a very, very long time until the Lord showed me that actually this particular one, it was not something that I was going to overcome uh, because of, you know, just praying it away. There was a particular action. There was a particular root cause as to why this particular dream or dogs will not live my life. And once I made that decision to deal and to make the decision that the Lord wanted me to make, that was the end of those particular ones. So, this is what I'm saying. If you're single and you believe in God for marriage, and you're still seeing something to do with the a spirit of sp uh, sexual immorality, aka dogs, or monitoring spirits that walk in the form of dogs, my sister, my brother, get down on your knees and seek God for your deliverance. Because these are the type of spirits that will monitor you. If you, they will make sure that either the people that you meet are people that are just plain out, like womanizers. You may not know it today, but later on, things will start coming out that they cannot commit to you. The same men that cannot commit to you, that cannot, that don't want to wife you, the minute they leave you, they will go and immediately marry someone else. You hear that, oh, they're they married. They wouldn't marry you. They wouldn't settle for you, but they will go and do it for someone else. These are the same spirits that will ensure that you yourself, you just can't live a life without a man. You just want to sleep around. You just, you get men, you want to get married. But before you know what you're sleeping with them, because the enemy is keeping you into a loophole of sleeping with men so that Satan will have something to accuse you of. He's the accuser of the brethren, isn't he? So that he can go to before God and say, you want to give this one a, 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 a wife? You want to give this one a man? Look, they're sleeping around. You see? You've already defiled the marriage bed before you're even in a marriage. And the man that wants to marry, unless it's already the case that this is the man that is supposed to marry. Some people have that grace that they slept with someone and they were already, you know, their husband somewhere, somehow. And some of them were not Christians at the time. Some of them were even Christians at the time. They fell into sin and it somehow worked out and they ended up being married. But anyway, they, they still other issues that come with that. When you start the foundation wrongly, sometimes there are other issues. That they will come out of that if they're not repented for later on in life. But what I'm saying for me, the many years that I saw dogs, my life was upside down. The, those many years, a lot of, like at the beginning of the journey, before I knew what it was, really is, and was, and I started go, going after my deliverance, I just wanted to just sleep around. I just wanted to just, I'd wake up with one man and I'd be thinking to myself, mm, I don't know why I don't like you anymore. You, we did in five days, nothing happened. I just don't want to be that relationship anymore. I just fancy probably being with someone else. I was attracting men like flies, right, left, and center. I mean, it was abnormal. Let me just say it was abnormal. People that were way younger than me, they would look at me and find me so attractive. People that are way older than me, like all kinds of people, because I had that really bad, I don't want to call it an anointing, I had that really bad spirit following around me. People just want to, and every time when I'm about to go into another relationship, I'll just see some form of a dog passing past me. I know there's a man coming. Or there's a kind of a situation that involves something to do with that. Or if a man is asking me out and I start to see these dogs again, I know this, this, this will end in tears. It's, it's never going anywhere. You see, or you'll be someone that is always constantly sleeping around you will not find people that want to really marry you. They just want sex because the spirit that is chasing after you, that is monitoring you, that's what it wants. It doesn't want people that want to commit to you. It just wants people that wants to use you. So if you're still, still seeing dogs in your life, please, instead of focusing on which man should marry you, focus on praying for yourself. Focus on acquiring your deliverance yourself. Sometimes it will be that someone is be it will be it will be asking me out, um, and all of a sudden the Lord will show me a the vision of that a huge dog, a bulldog standing right next to them. I'm like, ah, this one is bad news. Don't even bother to go there because they are followed around. They themselves they don't have the capacity to be faithful. 
they are so uh, they, they, they have the same spirit that was chasing after me right so there's a before i finish this one i don't want to make it very long there's a lot of other things that i'll talk about i just want to conclude with this there is a, a, a dream that I had, a sister that had gone to the man of God. And I tell this sometimes to the people that I know several times, because to me, it spoke volumes from where I was in life. Uh, so this sister had been through relationship upon relationship upon relationship. She was just like me, seeing dogs always somewhere, somehow around her in the dream. And she said, like, uh, she, was, she would have men. They would do anything for her. I had men spoil me. They did everything for me apart from wanting to marry me. Some of them, okay, going back to this uh, particular sister. So the, the men who come, the minute she starts to get, you know, so serious about marriage or wanted to get married, that man will disappear. She would just hear it in a story from some that, oh, that boyfriend of yours got married last weekend. He had a massive wedding. I should be like, no way. I was sleeping with him a week ago. How did he get married? She'll be the last one to find out. That happened over and over again. By the time she came to the pastor, to my pastor, for prayers, this was the fifth man. This man had bought her a house, had treated her so well. And she's like, she could not hold, take this anymore. She now realizes that there might be something very, very wrong. She was crying out to the man of God, saying, look, man of God, the rest that have come and gone, I can let them go. But this one, and after they get married, after that is done, they will come back and try to get back with her. They'll be like, look, I don't know what happened. I really do not know what happened. Can you take me back? So she was crying her eyes out. But this man of God, he has one thing he does. Before he do anything for you, he will just pray for you. Ask you, what kind of dreams do you dream? Because he's a very strong believer in dreams. He said, God tells us all the time. All the time. It's just that we don't understand the dreams. We see things. And we are very careless with them. Before you know it, you're in the same bondage for years. And you want to blame God. No, God was warning you all the time. This man of God will say to you, look, there's nothing that is happening to you that you don't somewhere, somehow already know or see in the dream. What are your dreams telling you? You ask you, what kind of dreams are you dreaming recently? Or tell me some of the dreams you've ever had around this area, around that area. So the girl, she was like, oh, she, she's not sure, but she knows, you know, she's, Seeing all these dogs, this funny, funny thing. Say, so, okay, if you're someone that you don't remember your dreams or you don't dream, he'll put his hand on you. He'll pray for you and say, go. I release your dream life. Go and dream. And when you dream, come back and share with me. And within the answer, the, 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 the dream that you see, that's why we'll find the answer of what we need to tackle. Lo and behold, he prayed for this girl. She went. She had a dream. That in the dream, she was getting ready to go somewhere, put her nice makeup on, go to the door. Went to open the door, there was a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a tiny caterpillar on one side and a tiny snail. She said, ah, why are this? is it raining outside? Why are these things in the, in the front of my door? I need to get them out so, you know, I can go. She was rushing. She got a broom to try and sweep them out of the door. She can pass. As soon as she tried to do that and open the door, they both turned into, the caterpillar turned into a fully blown snake. Python, and um, I don't remember what the other one turned into, but they turned into huge beasts or things that there's absolutely no way she was getting through that door. She got so scared and started walking backwards. The more she tried to open the door to find another way out, is the bigger they grew. And she woke up. She came and told the man, the man of God, this is what I saw. The man started laughing, said, look, let me tell you something. That dream means two things. A lot of people see this type of dreams. But this is how Satan works in our lives. There is something that is blocking your spiritual door. In your eyes, the same way these men have been coming to you asking for marriage, you get so upset when it, it ends in tears, it goes, I let him go. After all, another one will come. They, they've always been coming. You see? But because in you, in your mind, as she was looking at this door, looking to, to, to get out, you think you'll get out. But the actual thing, Reality is that if you don't deal with those situations, if you don't clear the bondages in your life, you will never get to where you think you're trying to get. The deception we have is that we think somewhere, somehow, it will happen. And this is what the enemy wants. He said to her, the problem is, you saw that they were tiny when you are far. Because there was no threat of you trying to escape. 
The problem came when you try to open the door to try and escape to where you don't want to go. That's why they become bigger. Than, no, 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 no. You have no access. You cannot live with here. Tomorrow you may here to make sure that you stay at that level. Let those men come and sleep with you. They can buy you the gifts. You don't mind. But they will never marry you. Let all your age finish until you're 60, 70. You dreamt of getting married, but you never made it there. You dreamt of getting children, you never made it there. You tell you drop. You said this is how people are in reality. People dream of getting rich. They sit there and say, "Oh, one day I'll get rich." They dream. They never stop dreaming of getting rich. They, ne they never stop hoping of getting rich. They never stop getting of hoping of getting married. It look like it's, it's on the cards. It will happen when one goes. Then them go another one come back. When will that cycle end, my friend? Apart from that one going, the last one you, you chased out when they chased themselves and left. The years are going and that's what the enemy wants. Just like what I mentioned in the first uh, 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 episode of this. That's what the enemy wants. Say, let, 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 you keep sitting and think, oh, it, that, that, those caterpillars will clear us so out. Go, no. Their problem is that you have no access to that door, to, to get through that door. They're there to make sure that they fill it up. You can't go nowhere. Just like what was happening to this girl. And then the man of God was saying, look, that's why you see a lot of people will hope they'll get, I'll get, I'll get married. I'll go, but then, Luckily for you, you've woken up and said, hang on a minute. At the age of 22, I, I used to look around and say, I'm here even, I'm surprised. These women that say they can't find a man to marry. All these men that keep trying to wife me. I'm thinking in my head they're trying to wife me, but no one was trying to wife me. That's a reality. I watched my years go. Tick, tock, tick, tock. The, 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 the clock. You know, going year after year, I, the time, it took me so long to even want to get, you know, married properly. And when I thought, before it was easy, I can just pick one of these, I realized that no, no, there's a serious battle here. I watched my years go from the sweet 20s. Before I know it, I'm in my 30s. I'm like, oh, how did I get here? I thought this was a very easy thing. I've clocked 30 and there's still no man. There's no man. The men are there. But they don't want relationship. They want relationship. They don't want marriage. And now to start with the journey of deliverance, my friend, don't joke with this thing because don't, you don't want to find out the hard way. The thing that looks so easy, you're like, oh, I'm still young. It will happen. Satan can make sure that you clock 40. You clock 50. Hey, don't joke with this guy. In your mind, you're like, there's absolutely no way, but I'll tell you now. It is possible. So, Luckily for this girl, she went and sought, uh, uh, sought help. And this man of God said, okay, look, we'll pray. And say it to her. I mean, there must be other dreams that you're, you're dreaming because these particular creatures that you're seeing in the door, again, the reason they are two, they are presenting, representing two different types of bondages. One on the marital side, the other one on the paternal side. Oh, she said, oh, I remember now. Sometimes I have a dream of two particular relatives that are dead. One is on the father's side, the other one is on the mother's side. They're, they're both fighting, you know, over me. One is saying it's ours, the other one is saying it's ours. There's something to do with marriage. Again, I'm like, hey? So that taught me something. Don't sit on your deliverance. Don't let the enemy waste your years. Because to you, it will look like it will happen. But the journey between where you are and you're hoping that it will happen to where it actually happens, it could take years. I ha me personally, going back to myself, I spent years of God promising me that Godly, you will get married. I saw dreams of marriage. I saw the Lord making me promise that, look, you see these hands. You see my mighty hands. With these hands, I will lift you myself and plant you into a marriage that me, myself, I planted you in. But when, he, when I first saw such dreams, I was like, I got so excited. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in my season. I'm getting married. From the time the Lord gave me that dream, another seven years, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head, passed before I could see the reality of what was being promised. Just because you're seeing the dreams of breakthrough, look at all the other dreams of things that don't make sense. Look at all these other dogs that you're seeing alongside the dreams of breakthrough. You see, because God is showing that there is hope. But he also gives it room. There is something in between. There is a, 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 a what do you call it? There, 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 there are a, 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 a nations that are currently occupying the promised land that the Lord has promised you that you must occupy. 
and you must take on the journey of killing those guys, of scattering those guys, of removing them off your land before you can occupy it. Because sometimes God doesn't give it raw. You see? Does, because if he gives us to us raw, we don't know how to keep it. And we have the enemy that is constantly trying to take what belongs to us. God will save your life, but you have to fight for your blessing. You have to fight for your blessing and to be able to maintain it. So anyways, I don't want to make this one very long, but I'll come back with another one. Part three. So thank you very much again for tuning in. I'll speak to you very soon.